wow, it is so worth getting up for this in the morning. I'm talking a beautiful day. So we're getting amazing diffused light coming up to my face. I should do this more often. So guys, the reason I'm making this video today is to talk to you about soundproofing the room wherever you are. And I'm in a rented room, so technically I'm not really supposed to be doing this, but hopefully with the method that I'm doing this with, there is minimal damage to the wall that I'm doing. If there's any damage caused by this, I'm willing to pay for it. So uh, that's a forewarning for you guys as well. But the reason I had to do this is because this room is so small and closed, created a lot of echo. And I don't know if you could still hear the echo. There's still a little bit left echo I gotta take care of. But as of now, three sides of my room are pretty much treated. The wall side, the window side has double curtains. I even put a blanket on top of the curtain to dampen the sound a little bit more. The computer side, you could see I got the honeycomb style um, panels. And behind the camera, I have the square ones. And that one will create like a solid surface to help soundproof the entire wall because that's actually the side of the neighbors, which actually they're not home very often. I don't know what they do. I never see them. But so far, I haven't gotten any complaints. So that might be a good thing but I still want to make sure I don't bother my neighbors with all the Zoom calls that I've been doing for work. Yeah, I'm just taking precautions and thinking about my neighbors. After I treated the entire wall, I noticed that there were some dark lines in my Zoom calls. Since the wall is blurred out due to the fact that I do use my mirrorless cameras for as webcams, so not everything is in focus, just me and my background is blurred out, but I could still see like the little shadow of the cracks where the panels didn't quite meet, they're not flush, because yeah, I am using the cheapest panels I could find in Amazon, and uh, I can see why they're cheap. They don't line up perfectly well. Today, I was just gonna tell you a little DIY on how to fill those little edges if you find yourself in a similar situation. Now, if you have panel to spare, all you gotta do is just shave off little layers of the one panel that you have left over, fill in the little cracks with those shapes, and that's pretty much it. After that, you'll see the results later on from my A7S. I did a test with how everything looks after it's all said and done, and I'm pretty satisfied with the results. No more crack, black cracks or little shadows in the background everything looks solid gray now if you're curious on how i treated the wall i actually used two different materials underneath the sound boards that i have here which is like a cheap layers of velcros i'm talking about it could be in the hundreds i don't know it's pretty thick though and it does work a little bit let me see if i cover my lap mic that's it no it's not gonna work because my throat is here anyway but hopefully you could hear the difference. Can you hear the difference? I don't know. That would be interesting to know. Well, anywho, the other material I'm using is this wall isolation mat. I don't know what it is, but it's supposed to work with audio as well. It's supposed to stop the audio. So let's do the audio test again. Does it help? Hopefully it does. Now the way to attach these to the wall causing the least amount of damage is using office pins. I found a case of like thousands for just like $4. So I got plenty to spare. Now these pins are so, so thin. The hole is barely visible after you pull them back out. These nails are very thin, so they're flimsy. So they're a little hard to nail on the wall. Just be careful, they're gonna bend. So it's a lot of trial and error, but I'm happy because they don't leave a lot of scar. Office pins. Also, for, for the hammer, I use this rubberized hammer from the dollar store. It's just covering rubber, so it helps cushion the blows a little bit. You don't wanna be too loud and obvious that you're hammering on the wall, so this will do as well. And of course, a trusty cutter. And that's it. Those are the only tools you need to soundproof your room. Well. Aside from the sound treatment panels themselves, all the links to these materials are going to be in the description down below. Well, aside from the dollar store stuff, 
I have no affiliation with Seria or Daiso here in Japan, so there are no links for those, but you could go to your local dollar store, get yourself a rubberized hammer, cutters. That's pretty much it. Now, throughout this whole conversation, how was the audio? Was there a lot of feedback? Did you get a lot of echo, anything like that? I don't know yet, because I'm not monitoring my audio yet, but I can't wait to get in post and see what we got. Yo guys, what do you all think? Pretty cool, right? I mean, it's not bad for cheap sound panels. Um, this is the final result. This is what people see in Zoom. This is one of the angles that I sometimes use for my YouTube headshots. Um, I also have the honeycomb behind the camera, behind my Mac mini. So I could also have another angle for my YouTube videos. You know, I'm pretty psyched about this new setup that I'm slowly but surely building up and i really wanted to get rid of the echo so right now i only have four sides of my room treated out of the six sides you know because a room is a cube we got six sides we got four walls the ceiling and the floor right now i am treating the floor i got a soundproofing mat under the soundproof carpet so it's a double cushion it's actually nice and soft to sleep on yeah we got the floor treated nicely as you can see behind me, we got the panels back there with the soundproofing mat as well. Behind the camera and my Mac Mini setup, the M1 Mac Mini, I have the honeycomb style audio panels wrapped going around the monitor. But anyway, this wall is not that important because on the other side is still my apartment. It's the kitchen and dining area. So I don't care so much. I just padded this wall to avoid the echo. On the left side, that was the light setup I had the light setup is the window i closed it up because i when i'm in the you know doing my zoom stuff i always close the curtains to provide again any fabric you could have on the walls on the corners anything it will help dampen the sound so that's actually soundproofing that wall now unfortunately the storage doors are wood with shiny um glossy paint so I'm sure that's causing some reverb, some echo in this room. And hopefully that's not showing up in the final result. So let me know guys in the section down below. What do you think about this overall treatment? I'm trying to keep it as cheap, but still look decent enough to be on camera. Do you guys like what you see? Let me know in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for sticking around and watching the project that I'm, is still a work in progress, but slowly but surely we'll be able to finish this YouTube setup and hopefully improve the video as well as the audio for your guys' listening and viewing pleasure. Well, that's it for me. I got to get over to the editor and edit this video. So, see you guys next time. Peace.